I was blown away when found out my wife did it with AP in our marital bed and children's room. A little background, my wife, 28F, and I, 28M, have been together for 13 years. We started dating when we were roughly 16, never broke up, and got married three years ago. We had the kind of relationship that others were jealous of, and everyone always expected us to get married when we were younger. Over the past year and a half to two years, things started changing between us. Some issues came up with her family and she started to become more and more distant, both emotionally and physically, starting being super protective of her phone, and grew closer and closer with a male coworker. Long story short I snooped, yes, I know this is bad, on her phone, because I had a feeling something was going on based off a variety of factors and found incriminating texts confirming that she was having an affair with this guy. When I confronted her early September, she owned up to it saying that it had been going on for a year. They had been having the affair in our home, sleeping together in the bedroom that would eventually be the room where our future children slept. She apologized, saying it would never happen again, and I told her that in order for us to move on, I need her to have no contact with the person she cheated on me with. Two months later, and they are still talking occasionally, with her saying it is unfair of me to ask her to not talk to someone she considers a close friend. I honestly don't know what to do at this point. I am trying to see if I can move on, but I feel like I can never trust her again. I feel like her choosing to be in touch with him still shows that she is choosing their relationship over ours. I am just totally torn on what my gut is telling me. She also told me not to tell any of our friends what is going on, so I don't even have someone to talk to. Sorry, this was a bit of a rant, but it's the first time I have written it all out, and I really do not know how to proceed or how to cope with this. Edit was not expecting this large of a reaction. Outside a few of you that seem to think nasty replies are appropriate when someone has their entire life crumble around them, this was helpful. I know what I need to do, I just need to rip off the band-aid and do it. I am going to call the lawyer I spoke to a few weeks ago tomorrow and see how he says I should approach the situation. I figured it was time to update since all of your advice was so helpful. After posting here a little over a month ago and reading all of your advice I called my lawyer, told my parents and some close friends what was going on, and told my wife that I wanted a divorce. She begged and pleaded, promising to make things better and cut off contact with the AP. We spent all weekend together with her promising things and saying and doing all the right things. I did not fully believe her but I was willing to give her her one more chance to try and save what I thought we had. Things were fine, we were more or less just coexisting for about a month, but she was on her phone a lot less and being more attentive to me. Well, two weekends ago she handed me her phone to show me something and I suspiciously swiped up on her open apps and there she was, talking to her AP on Instagram. I flipped out and she promised he just messaged her and she told him that she could not talk. This was blatantly false as I read their conversation and they were discussing what they were each doing that night. I was again duped, lied to and deceived. She told me she would finally block him but wanted to say goodbye since he was a friend. I said it was inexcusable and that she had to cut off contact and block him right then, which she said she would. Two days later, I asked if she had blocked him and she had not yet. End of the long story I told her right on the spot that we are getting a divorce and we can either go through mediation if she agrees to every single thing that I want, or I can get my lawyer involved and I will get what I want anyway. She agreed to mediation and we are beginning that process shortly. It took me some time to get there, longer than it probably should have, but I finally have enough respect for myself to put an end to this and go find the life of happiness that I deserve. She still tries to make me feel bad about all of this, blaming me to a degree and telling me how awful of a situation I am putting her in, but I remind her that it was her actions that caused this, not mine, and that she has to live with the consequences of her actions. I have also begun telling more friends about what happened along with the rest of my family. This is not how I ever saw my life going, but I know that this is a blessing in disguise and I will end up with someone who truly makes me happy. So, after telling my ex, 29F, that we were getting a divorce, the gaslighting went into overdrive. Blaming me, telling me that it is my fault that I am doing this to us, that I am giving up on our marriage, that it is really sad that I am letting our relationship end this way, and that I am going to take away the home that our dog knows, etc., etc. I stood strong, didn't let her get to me, 
and went through with divorce mediation. Mediation was smooth, she agreed to everything that I wanted, and I received notice from the courts yesterday that I am a free man. We sold the house within three months of starting mediation, she moved out one month prior to closing on the house. The gaslighting continued while living together waiting for the house to sell, with her continuing to blame me and telling me that I am mean because I refused to speak to her at all, and countless other things that only a truly sick individual would think to be true given the situation. Once the house sold, I moved back to my parents for a few months to collect myself and just figure out what to do with my life. I started weekly therapy and was able to reflect on the relationship, seeing how toxic and one-sided everything was. How I was the one always putting myself second and sacrificing my happiness to try to tolerate her and her unrealistic needs and expectations. My therapist suggests that it sounds like she has borderline personality disorder, which is a condition that runs in her family and it makes total sense. I was also able to, and continue to, work on underlying issues that allowed me to get into such a toxic relationship and at this point I feel like I will be able to identify the warning signs. I recommitted to my physical health as well, losing 15 pounds over the last three months and getting back into running, currently training for a 10k. Early this month, I moved into my own place in New York City, I am reconnecting with friends who I lost touch with, and I have started dating for the first time in my life, albeit pretty unsuccessfully at this point. Plus, I got a promotion at work a few weeks ago that I worked my tail off for. I am mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially in a better place than I have been in years, and her showing me her true colors by having this affair was the greatest favor she could have done for me. I still have not told all of our mutual friends about the affair, as I was afraid she would get angry and tank mediation, but now that the divorce is final I will be notifying everyone in our lives as to who she is and what she did. I guess all this was all just a long-winded way of saying that things will get better. There is nothing wrong with any of us because we were cheated on, and to try to use this as a launching point for you making yourself better and working to make yourself the best possible person. This is going to be my last significant post here most likely as while I don't think my journey of healing has come to an end, it's just come to a new chapter and dwelling on what this woman did to me is not worth it. Thank you again for all the support, both in terms of kind words as well as the harsh truths that I had to read. Caught my wife cheating on our 23rd wedding anniversary. I posted here about what would have been our 23rd wedding anniversary last Sunday, but I've never shared my story. Someone who left a nice comment there encouraged me to share. So here goes. My wife and I met in college, got married after grad school, and had two beautiful children together. There were some issues, but life together was generally very good. Three years ago we were sitting at the kitchen table during tax season. We were discussing finances, not just the monthly budget but the big stuff. I found it a bit odd that she was texting during such an important conversation. It wasn't texting the kids, they were both home. To this day, I have no idea what compelled me to snatch her phone from her hand mid-text. I had never suspected a thing, at least consciously. A look of horror immediately came over her so I darted into the other room with the phone and locked the door. The text string was about planning a weekend in Vegas with her AP. I was blown away. She was banging on the door, yelling and sobbing. I texted the guy pretending to be her. I wrote something like, I can't wait to be between the sheets with you again. His response affirmed that they were sleeping together. While locked in the room, I called my brother. He came over and convinced my wife to stay with him for a few days. Drama naturally ensued, but after a couple of months of me living on the boat, we decided to try to try to reconcile. We had weekly therapy sessions together and alone. We each went to two sessions a week for about a year. Some ground rules were set. One rule was that she was never to contact AP again. It wasn't a sacrifice as she had no professional or social connections with him other than the affair. It was a real grind, I had strong emotions of anger, fear, pain, hopefulness, and despair. Gradually, things started to arrive at a new normal. I started enjoying life with her again. I thought that we were a success story. I used to run a search for AP's phone number in our phone provider's call log often with her knowledge. I did the search less and less as time went on. 
About a year ago, again without suspicion, I ran the search and there it was. Two minutes long calls between them and then two calls that were over 30 minutes each. I called AP's number and the voicemail announced his name. I felt that it would be ill-advised for me to leave a recording of my thoughts for him, so I hung up. I was crushed. All of the regained trust evaporated instantly. I laid the groundwork by quietly moving some money around, changing passwords, retaining a lawyer, and securing a place to live. After that, I confronted her. I told her that she had broken the ground rule and that I would be leaving and filing for divorce. I went on to say that nothing that there was nothing that she could say or do that would change my mind and that discussion on the matter was pointless. Of course, drama ensued. I've been gone for about a year now. We co-parent well and the divorce process has gone smoothly. Our children are well and mostly happy. I guess those are successes. I'm fairly new, so I am pasting the original below and additional information below that. I'm compelled to provide this to try to answer some of the more common questions. Original, she cheated and I thought we were a success story. I posted here about what would have been our 23rd wedding anniversary last Sunday, but I've never shared my story. Someone who left a nice comment there encouraged me to share. So here goes. My wife and I met in college, got married after grad school, and had two beautiful children together. There were some issues, but life together was generally very good. Three years ago we were sitting at the kitchen table during tax season. We were discussing finances, not just the monthly budget but the big stuff. I found it a bit odd that she was texting during such an important conversation. It wasn't texting the kids, they were both home. To this day, I have no idea what compelled me to snatch her phone from her hand mid-text. I had never suspected a thing, at least consciously. A look of horror immediately came over her so I darted into the other room with the phone and locked the door. The text string was about planning a weekend in Vegas with her AP. I was blown away. She was banging on the door, yelling and sobbing. I texted the guy pretending to be her. I wrote something like, I can't wait to be between the sheets with you again. His response affirmed that they were sleeping together. While locked in the room, I called my brother. He came over and convinced my wife to stay with him for a few days. Drama naturally ensued, but after a couple of months of me living on the boat, we decided to try to try to reconcile. We had weekly therapy sessions together and alone. We each went to two sessions a week for about a year. Some ground rules were set. One rule was that she was never to contact AP again. It wasn't a sacrifice as she had no professional or social connections with him other than the affair. It was a real grind, I had strong emotions of anger, fear, pain, hopefulness, and despair. Gradually, things started to arrive at a new normal. I started enjoying life with her again. I thought that we were a success story. I used to run a search for AP's phone number in our phone provider's call log often with her knowledge. I did the search less and less as time went on. About a year ago, again without suspicion, I ran the search and there it was. Two minutes long calls between them and then two calls that were over 30 minutes each. I called AP's number and the voicemail announced his name. I felt that it would be ill-advised for me to leave a recording of my thoughts for him, so I hung up. I was crushed. All of the regained trust evaporated instantly. I laid the groundwork by quietly moving some money around, changing passwords, retaining a lawyer, and securing a place to live. After that, I confronted her. I told her that she had broken the ground rule and that I would be leaving and filing for divorce. I went on to say that nothing that there was nothing that she could say or do that would change my mind and that discussion on the matter was pointless. Of course, drama ensued. I've been gone for about a year now. We co-parent well and the divorce process has gone smoothly. Our children are well and mostly happy. I guess those are successes. Additional info, STBXW, her income will be sufficient to support her. I pay part of the mortgage on the house and monthly support for our daughter. We are selling the house when my daughter graduates from high school and splitting the equity. 
That will be enough for her to make a down payment for a new place to live. She will be fine. I have no idea if she has a relationship with AP. She may be dating him or someone else, but probably hasn't had any men at the house. Our daughter would have told me. A fair partner, she met him at work before she switched careers. He had no interaction with our social circle. I vaguely recall meeting him at one of her former employer's holiday parties. On the first D-Day, STBXW told me that he was single. I didn't bother to ask after the second D-Day. I don't participate in much social media, but I have searched the web for him. Nothing that indicates his relationship status comes up. If I find out that he is in a relationship, I will certainly tell his significant other. Kids, our son is in a rigorous program at college and has a very demanding internship in the summer. When he is in the area, which isn't very often, he splits his time between us and enjoys staying on the boat some nights. I live in the entertainment district downtown so, when he's in town, he often crashes through my door late at night on the weekends with his buddies to sleep it off. I enjoy making a big breakfast for the boys the following morning. Our daughter lives with her mom during the week and with me on the weekends. She is an athlete with a fair number of friends so most of my weekend days are spent driving her to practice or to a friend's house. She likes to invite friends to my place for a night on the town and a sleepover. Again, breakfast is fun. They both know that mom was unfaithful. I don't bring it up. They haven't asked many questions and I prefer to leave it that way. Both have had a few sessions with a therapist and the therapist told me that she doesn't think additional sessions are needed. The divorce, we have taken a collaborative approach. We are splitting things fairly equally. We won't have any financial obligations to each other once our daughter graduates from high school and the house is sold. Some of our assets are difficult to place a value on and the complexity of that has prolonged the process. Why did she cheat? This question haunts me. My heart desperately wants an explanation. It just wants an explanation to make sense of it all. Just, why? Was I not enough? Was I not satisfying in the bedroom? Is my dad bought a turnoff? Did I say or do the wrong things? Was I not attentive enough? Is AP just better? What's wrong with me? I could go on and on. My mind, on the other hand, knows a few things. To me, there is no valid reason to cheat. No one forced her to remain in the marriage. She could have filed divorce papers, told me, and then jumped right into a relationship with someone else. Not much could have stopped that. I believe that she wanted the benefits of something new without the cost of losing what she had. I'm not sure if she assumed that I had stopped checking phone records or if she, on some level, wanted to be caught. What I do know is that by listening to her supposed reason for cheating, I would be allowing her to justify her actions. I am not willing to give her the comfort that comes with justification. My friend said she saw my partner with someone but I didn't believe and decided to order a voice recorder and finally found out the terrible truth. My divorce was final on July 5th. I contacted an attorney as soon as I got confirmation of the affair, and filed as soon as possible. As the primary wage earner throughout our marriage, my retirement was very financially vulnerable in a divorce. Luckily, it worked out well for me. My divorce attorney suggested that we offer my cheating ex-husband some rental property we had in exchange for hands off our residence and my retirement accounts, pension and other investments. My ex will also have to pay substantial capital gains, commissions, and income taxes on this rental property due to the way the property division was written. I ended up with two-thirds of the assets, my ex-husband with one-third. He stipulated and we were divorced, without even having to go to court. Yesterday, I went to another attorney to have my will revised. She gave great validation to what I had done. She said that she has never seen drawing out divorce proceedings go well for the higher wage earning spouse. As time goes by, the cheating spouse gets more and more greedy and feels entitled to a greater share of the marital assets. She said it was much better to file early while the cheating spouse is still emotionally involved with the AP and is living in a fantasy land where they will be together and they can just live on love. 
Once the love is gone, and it is clear the marriage is over, it all comes down to just a division of property anyway. So strike early and strike fast. My D-Day was the Sunday after Mother's Day in 2019. I had been faithfully married to my husband for 42 years. I went straight from my family to a college dorm to marriage and had never lived alone. I had retired the year before, and we had moved to a little hobby farm in the country to retire. Our farm had an outbuilding, where my husband kept his music room. I was 63 years old when I overheard him talking on the phone to a woman late into the night. I eavesdropped for a week. He always talked to the same woman, conveniently on speaker. I always ran back to the house when the conversation appeared to be winding down, as I did not want to be caught. I suspected an affair and ordered a voice-activated recorder off the internet. I confided to a girlfriend who could not believe that my 67-year-old husband would be having an affair. She convinced me to talk to him. Bad idea, to confront before you have full information by the way. So two years ago, I sat in the dark as the conversation ended. That is when the I love yous and the talk about closeness started. She could hardly wait to see him again, he wanted to be in bed with her, and he really really loved her. The conversation ended and I let him find me sitting on the stairs. I said so you really really love her? He became enraged, got two inches from my face, and screamed yes, I love her and I don't love you. No place to go from there, but to divvy up the assets and divorce. I went a little crazy that night, and X wisely chose to sleep in his music room. I called, texted and emailed everyone we knew and told them that my husband was having an affair and we were getting a divorce. One friend talked to me for hours until I calmed down. Within 24 hours, three friends had recommended the same attorney. I had an appointment with her two days later. I did not sleep for months. My heart would pound, I could not eat and I lost weight. I had to be medicated for the near-constant panic I felt. I did not want the stress of moving, again, and losing my house and farm on top of everything else, but I did not know if I could manage it by myself. I did not know if I could afford it. I was terrified. My pit bull attorney had me make a generous financial offer to my ex. Because we had married young and broke, everything was community property. I gave him some rental property in exchange for my getting the house and keeping my retirement accounts. My ex did not contest, he was deeply in the affair fog and did not even hire his own attorney. We divorced quickly, no kids or debt, and I ended up with two-thirds s of the marital assets. It has been two years now, and I cannot believe how happy I am. I am managing just fine. I bought a new zero-turn mower to manage my huge lawn and a Honda snowblower for the winter. I used some savings to have a sprinkler system installed. My girlfriends offered great support during the day, but I was lonely at night. I learned that, if I went to the gym in the evening and worked out really hard, I could then come home to a hot bath and sleep soundly. My ex moved away to be with his AP. I was no contact with him for more than a year, he texted me with a tax question, I gave a short, business-like response. I had my gray hair dyed and updated my wardrobe. I am healthier and look better than I have in years. I joined Meetup and forced myself to go out solo. I started to like living alone. My social life flourished. Six months after my divorce, I met a wonderful widower and found love at the age of 64. I am cannot believe how happy I am and how well I am doing. I am much older than most of you on this sub. If I can divorce and find myself love and happiness at my age, you can start over and build a new life too. Good riddance to cheaters and hugs to the hurting. Be brave and keep looking forward. The best is yet to come. Two years post-divorce and I am happy. He traveled to his hometown every two months, supposedly to visit his older brother with cancer, for a week at a time. It turns out he had reconnected with a high school girlfriend and had been living a double life with her. They were known as a couple among his old high school friends, while I stayed home to manage our farm and our business. He admitted that the affair had gone on for one year, but I have reasons to believe it was longer. 
I felt doubly betrayed as he claimed he was impotent after prostate surgery in 2009. I had remained faithful despite a dead bedroom and no physical affection for 10 years. My ex-husband had totally checked out while I continued to cook, clean, and run the business. I was devastated and furious. I had retired one year earlier and so had a very limited social circle. I felt too old and too ugly to be wanted by another man. I had not dated or even been with another man since the age of 19 and seriously doubted if I would ever be able to even take my clothes off in front of another man. I was overwhelmed and lost. I had to stay angry or I would spiral into a depression. My ex had no interest in trying to save the marriage. I filed for divorce and since we had no debts and no minor children and I made my ex a generous financial settlement, he did not contest. He could not wait to get to his AP full-time. My religion forbids ending, but I started going to the gym at night, since that was when the loneliness was the worst and attempting ending by Stairmaster. I would get my heart rate up to 180 way too high for my age and Stairmaster as long as I could. I couldn't eat anyway. Two years out, my life is much happier. I am dating a lovely widower that I met through a meetup group. I rarely think about my ex and have minimal contact with him and only about our adult special needs son. I have friends and a full social life. I have enough money to support myself comfortably and do what I want. I am happy living alone, although most nights I am with my boyfriend. Although it seems impossible when you are living through this crap, life does get better. Survive and one day, the pain will be behind you and you will make a choice to be happy. Hugs to all the suffering ones out there.